And one of the huge benefits is that you are um, you're working in a space now where all three endovascular specialties are working together. So these are uh, a, this is a snapshot really of the published papers, but there's more and more all the time that are being published showing really good data. So you can see our two uh, studies of 593 procedures and uh, 387 procedures, which I'll show you in a second. So this is our one paper published in CVIR. It's a prospective study looking at radial artery size, uh, 389 procedures, but 287 patients. And you can see here, although there's statistically significant differences in conventional versus distal radial artery size, it was mainly due to the sheer number of patients. Uh, but if you look at the actual numbers, there's about a 0.2 millimeter difference in size between the conventional and the distal radial artery. In other words, you don't necessarily have to downsize your sheath in order to do distal access. So although it's statistically significant, it's not clinically significant. And interestingly enough, females themselves were not statistically significant. But bear this in mind, uh, it's a common misconception that the distal radial artery is significantly smaller. Clinically, this doesn't translate into a, a problem. Uh, and if you don't use a hemostatic pad, this is what the patient looks like afterwards. Again, it's a much more proximal puncture than you think, but it's very comfortable for these patients. And one of the huge benefits is that they can move their wrists quite comfortably during hemostasis as well as after the procedure, whereas with conventional access, that can be a little bit limiting. So again, there's a lot more freedom for these patients after their procedure. This is our rapid hemostasis study that was published in JVIR called D-Protea. It's a prospective study June 2017 to October 2018, almost 600 procedures performed. 5,000 units of heparin and up to a six French sheath, 10 minutes of hemostasis using either a safeguard or sync distal with a statsil. And the statsil is absolutely mandatory in these patients. Some huge benefits and some learning points from the study. Firstly, you can access the distal radial artery multiple times as you can with conventional access if you do hemostasis correctly and you respect the vessel. You can access in patients who are cagulopathic. The nursing intensity was the huge benefit here. You can see 25 minutes mean nursing intensity time, which means that these patients uh, are seen by a nurse for only about 25 minutes after the procedure, which again, is a huge benefit. It means they can get out of hospital much faster. Very low hematoma rate, uh, seven in the total study, 1.74%, were all minor, no major issues and no radial artery occlusions up to a mean of 20 days post. And as you know, the highest rate of radial artery occlusion is immediately post-procedure. So at 20 days, if you're not seeing an occlusion, uh, it is very, very unlikely that these patients spontaneously thrombose that far out. So again, one of the huge benefits in the study, the nursing intensity. This is what the safeguard uh, looks like with the, with the um, stat seal or with the uh, sync distal and the stat seal. So you can use any hemostatic device you want as long as it's secure and you can secure that uh, uh, stat seal to the uh, access site. So in summary, distal radial is a safe alternative access site for radial intervention. It's more comfortable for these patients. It allows operators to work from the right hand side if they need to for a room setup perspective or if it's just easier in general and easier for the patient. Uh, and the rapid hemostasis protocol with a stat cell, which is mandatory as I said, uh, can be hugely beneficial in terms of room turnaround, patient recovery, complication rates, nursing intensity.